We're ready? Lay it on. Okay, so this first page, so I printed it out, you don't have to, I emailed it to you, but um, so this first page, we're looking to see if you have a, a metabolic efficiency point, right? Okay. So that's what we call it when you start out burning more fat than carbs, and then you have a place where you cross over into burning more carbs than fat. So that would be your metabolic efficiency point. Cool. So looking at your chart, so the, the gray line is the percentage of carbohydrates you're burning at that stage that we tested. Um, the orange line is the percentage of fat. So we can look at your chart. You're starting out burning more carbs than fat. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I say it. We don't have a metabolic efficiency point at this state yeah. in the game, but you can get one. Um, and I'll tell you how. <laughs> I'm not losing sleep. I trust you'll tell me what's what. <laughs> so for each block here, right? So this is um, the way the data is collected is I, I average the last two minutes of each stage. So you need some time for your body to adapt to the new pace. Uh -huh. And then those last two minutes of the stage, I average the data and that's where this, this, these numbers are coming from and what we have down here. So first four minutes, then eight, you know, so this is how the stages are delineated. Your pace, um, RER, so this is that number that you could see on the screen uh -huh. yesterday. Respiratory exchange ratio. So that's the difference between oxygen uptake, carbon dioxide output. Uh -huh. And that number um, goes from 0.7, which is 100% fat burning, to 1.0, which is 100% carb burning. So, oh, so I start really high. It's not really high. I mean, it's just over the 50-50 mark, right? It's 0.86. And so this is um, what this number comes out to be, but this is you know the actual measurement. So I. 0.85 is generally 50-50, but here, based on the actual measurement, you're 52-48. Cool. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, you know, then we see how it progresses with the numbers. And, I mean, the good news is, is even though you are more carb burning, it's not like down here, when you're getting to faster paces, it, it is starting to go up, but you're generally flat here, which yeah. is good. Sometimes when people are over, they'll just go right up. Um, so that's a positive um, out of that. And then we have your heart rate, the average heart rate for those last two minutes, and then the perceived exertion that you reported to me. So that's what this chart looks like. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So I have some text down here saying there are ways to change this. This is not set in stone. It's not, um, you know, we can, we can modify this. And there are three things we can focus on. Um, one is daily nutrition stuff. Uh huh. Two is targeting certain paces, and then training nutrition. And so we'll go through all aspects. And because because of where you're at right now, and that you don't have a metabolic efficiency point, the first one is going to be the biggest impact for you. Cool. Yeah. And, and all right, I'll just keep going through this. And then so a lot of text here, but what this is saying is basically like. Why is this important? Why do we want to be more fat burning than carb burning? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, most people can hold up to about 2,000 calories of carbohydrate, store that on our body, mm -hmm. store um, 2,000 calories of carbohydrate on our body. Women might be less, so it depends on body size um, and gender. So based on that and thinking about running a marathon, yeah. right, if you are able to be running at a faster pace and burning more fat at that pace, you're holding on to those carbs, right? Yeah. So that means you need to let eat less during that race, right? Which is great because it can be a challenge to be at your race pace and trying to you know, eat the calories you need, um, which can impact stomach and lots of other things also make you slow down because yeah. when you put food in, blood diverts to your stomach away from your legs that are trying to run, um, you know, causing you to slow down. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, it can, it, it, it ha it's basically like a reserve for, okay, last three miles, if you want to pick it up a little bit, you, you'll you have that. So from the performance perspective, can be hugely helpful, yeah. right? Um, it's also helpful shifting your metabolism in a way that that fat is the, the you know, preferred fuel source that will help, help a lot of health things. Yeah. Right? Um, so that's what this is saying basically. And, and you know, whenever someone's talking about the fat burning system, that is the aerobic system, right? So the, that pathway in your body 
they're the same thing, right? So anything we're doing to increase the fat burning is helping develop your aerobic system, which means that when you are going at faster paces, you will be able to maintain that and it'll feel easier, right? Here we're looking at each stage. Okay, what was the breakdown of the, of the calorie expender? So if you were at any of these paces for an hour, this is what the calorie burn looks like total. And then this is carb calories and orange is fat calories. So what's the composition of your, cause it's not just. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. What it looks Whoa. like. Yep. I would never even, I mean, obviously of course this is happening, but I, you obviously, I mean, yeah. oh man, you have so much I'm doing to do from all the health and fitness industry oh, yeah. calories are calories. Yeah. Not the same. No, no. This is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, sometimes articles will say like, oh, well, if you are going slower all the time, you're burning more calories because you're burning more fat calories, but not, you're always burning more calories the faster you're going. Yeah. But based on how well your body is at using fat will determine what the contribution is. See here, you know, you're going faster, you're burning more total, but you're still burning more fat calories than you are Why is there here. a dip here? Yeah, it's just what, what how your physiology is right now. Yes. And so... Maybe, you know, for some people where they are burning higher is higher fat is where they just tend to fall into a pace when they're mm -hmm. just running, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if there's a pace that your body just feels more comfortable at, it might be one of these. It's right. Those two exactly. Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's why that's so weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is what I'll try to do on my own, but like when I'm with people, this is what we do and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the and things I can that see we're that. Really working on and the, getting out of. Mm -hmm. Oh, of getting out of what? That habit of me feeling safe here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's this as safe here as it is here. Yep. Uh, yeah. I literally had this conversation with my coach yesterday. Yeah. For like the 30th time. Yep. That's very interesting. Yeah, and that's one of the things too is like, you know, when, when someone does have a crossover point, um, that is the true aerobic zone. Like, you know how people are like, you gotta run slower? And yes, yeah. that is true, you you do, but yeah. it needs to be within the aerobic zone. Yeah. And so when, when you have a crossover point, you see really what that is, yeah. right? But you, those, you know, we'll get you one. So based on this information, right, how your body is utilizing um, the, the calories and the different calories, then I make, um, this chart for what are your calorie needs during longest runs yeah. and racing. So this, so there are two charts um, with this data on it. The first one is for anyone who, for you, if you like to have a fuel source that contains protein and fat in addition to carbohydrates. Most marathon runners don't, they just go for carb sources and that's fine, but I just leave this in here in case that's ever something you do. Um, so the second one is what we look at, right? So this is the range of calories we're going to be looking at for you based on race pace or long run pace yeah. to fuel those workouts. Um, and so it's a range. So this lower number, you never, you, you can never go lower than that. You okay. always need to be hitting that number when you're fueling those workouts. The top number, you do not need more than that. Your body just does not need more than that. And it's a important not to overeat in workouts yeah. just like in daily living right because so that when you put food in your mouth when you're exercising too that is the easiest fuel source for your body to use yeah so it will and so when if you're taking in more than you need then your body won't be training itself to use its Other own store like yeah. your own store of fat right so we want to find so when i tell people you want to find like what the balance is for you and what feels right for you and so i tell people to pick midpoint yeah. for whatever the pace is going to be, start there, see how that feels. If you feel like you need more, you know, ramp it up a little bit, but then as your body is making adaptations to this, you'll find that maybe you feel like you need less, right? Um, so the text down here says, so not every workout needs to be fueled. Yeah. If you are doing a moderate intensity for two hours or less, you don't need calories, right? If hot summertime in New York, you'll need electrolytes. Yeah but not calories for fuel, okay? Um, and again, that goes back to allowing your body to be able to draw on its stored resources um, when you can, right? Yeah. Training it to do that. Um, high intensity, 90, the, the threshold is 90 minutes. Um, 
So that's what this is interesting. Okay. Any this is very interesting questions or no, not yet. And as your body changes and this line changes, these numbers will change. Oh, they will shrink down. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This chart. So I'm looking here, um, just at calorie burn in a different way. So I'm looking at the ratio of fat calories to carb calories. Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, again, thinking about like, okay, as we increase intensity, we are increasing calorie burn, but which is increasing at a faster rate, right? So if the number is on here is one or less, that means fat calories are either at an equal rate mm -hmm. when it's one, and then below one, fat calories are increasing at a faster rate than carb calories. Over one, carb calories are um, increasing at a faster rate than fat calories. And so we can see where this is most efficient for you. This is, you know, kind of outside, you don't really run it that very often. Second most efficient. Makes sense. So yeah. And then here's where we start really seeing the calorie, uh, the carb calorie burn go up. So in this one, again, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the change in calorie burn from one stage to the next. So in these numbers, total calorie, I'm looking at the total calorie change, the carb calorie change and the fat calorie change. And then I'm looking to see where is there still an increase in fat calorie burn? So you're increasing from here to here in fat calorie burn. That gets the star. You decrease here. This stays the same. So I give it a star. That's if you're able to increase your intensity and keep fat calorie burn the same, good. You increase here, star, and you increase again here, hmm. so star. So what this means is because you're still able to increase fat calorie burn, you can apply these paces to different, you know, wherever this fits, this is race pace obviously. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing race pace stuff, yeah, great. That is gonna benefit you because you're better at burning fat here than here, yeah. right? And that's kind of the goal of some of this, you know, we're, when you think about your training, for the purpose of increasing the aerobic capacity mm -hmm. and this, right, to yeah. be able to increase the engine yeah. for the faster paces, you know, picking some of these paces is going to be better because when yeah. you're training where you're burning more fat calories, that will upregulate the system, right? Definitely. But you're going to have those times where you're doing speed work and you want to go significantly faster. All out. Yes. Yeah. And so it's about the balance, what's, what's the, what's the, exactly. Yeah. And putting some of these things in place. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So this is the exercise portion. Cool. Mm hmm. And then we get into, so this is resting. Oh, yeah. So people, everyone always wants to know. Mm hmm. So your RER is 0.92. Uh huh. 75% carb burning. 26%, so these don't add up exactly to 100. It makes sense of all my life. Yeah, but you can change this too. Yeah. And then I break it down into what's the gram contribution, grams of carbs per day, grams of fat per day that is being utilized, and then calories, um, and what your total daily calorie expenditure is before you add any other activity, right? And so this number is important. This is not a number you want to ever under eat. Yeah. This will change, right? So at, as body composition changes, if you have more lean mass, this number will change. Um, so that's not set in stone, but sometimes people get this number and they think they should under eat that number. Yeah. No. If they're looking to make changes, no. Definitely. That is a um, recipe for other issues. Any? No, this is fascinating. fascinating. Um, okay, so then, it's a lot of stuff going on on this chart, but I take the, one of the reasons I wanted you guys to do the RMR is it's great information too, but then I like to give this picture. So here I, I estimate what some of your total energy expenditure is for a day based on what a workout looks like for you. Oh, cool. So we have RMR, right? That number that we take from back here. Um, we have DIT, which is dietary induced thermogenesis. So every time you're eating food, your body is using calories to process that food. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of calories that are being used is dependent on the composition of that meal. 
So when you are eating protein, that is a much higher um, calorie need to process that than carbs and fat. Oh. Um, so I always, I am a fan of protein. You'll see as we go. Me too. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but protein gets a bad rap and it is definitely uh, not um, justified. Okay, so we have that number in here. Again, I made that up based on how many calories maybe you would be eating in a day. Physical activity expenditure. So this is coming from workouts that you might do. So down here, I have your paces and then how many calories per minute you were burning based on these paces. And then I did 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120. And then I just estimated what a moderate day. So you can track this back to what pace it is. So this, you know, 60 minutes at 913 pace, that's how many calories you would burn. Yeah. So then I add this, um, PA other, so this would be like getting dressed in the morning, walking around, doing yeah. stuff here, all that stuff. Again, this is an estimate. For some people, this could be a really high number, depending on how much activity you have in your day. Um, but these were just like safe numbers that yeah. I that I pulled. Some people can, you know, this could be close to a thousand calories a day for people, depending on what's going on. In the city, we tend to move more because we're walking a lot more. But um, usually, people spend, you know, spend more energy in this category on a rest day than on a longer run day. So that's why they're coming down. So then we have total energy expenditure. Then I, I put in a deficit because I, I we didn't talk about this, so I didn't get to ask you. But based on you know if you do have any body composition goals um, or weight loss goals, you know before race day, so most people do. Um, so I just put that deficit in and came up with these needs. Mm -hmm. One of the most important reasons why I do this for people is to see to show them the vast difference in their needs on a rest day and easy days versus a long day, Yeah. right? Um, and the, how important it is to not treat every day in terms of the food intake you have the same. Yeah, that makes sense. Just, yeah, to know that, you know, and some people think, oh, on my long run day or whatever, great, I'm in a deficit, I'm gonna ride that deficit wave and like not maybe eat as much as you know, or more, yeah. or deprive myself of something. Totally. Not not the day to do that, yeah. right? Like, fuel, um, the, fuel the machine. Fuel the machine. Okay, so then down here, so since you weren't sure what exactly your weight was, and I didn't know if you had any goals around that, I just did this number. So I didn't want to go over what you might be, because this will probably what I'll end up at by race day. Okay. That like tends to be what I'd say okay. at near marathon day. So I use this, to come up with estimates for it's where 165 just in case you want to know <laughs> um that's, that's perfect so then i i come up with macro targets for people based on this and this is where we will look back to the bullets on this page i want to compare this to what like my oh, app tells yeah. me to do i don't do it every, every day because it's what you, you such do. a pain in the ass but it is interesting to see does it do it in terms of grams I'm not sure. Because that's what I like people to look at. I don't like people to focus on calories and sometimes I'm even hesitant to give out the calorie data. For okay, people. so they... Oh, mm. okay, not too bad. Okay, so protein's got you yeah, at 165, not bad. And yesterday I had ice cream, so... Which is fine, I'm... <laughs> this is like a perfect example of like hmm. a day. So how, do you know how this is calculated for you? Mm-mm. No. No clue. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure we just put in how active I am, height, weight. Gotcha. Which I think I did 170. Which I think I'm at. I did the sweat thing yesterday. Oh, good. We can look at that. Then. Yeah. Okay. I lost three pounds of sweat in an easy day. Okay. So that was. Yeah. And it wasn't like overly hot. I'm not going to show it. Fine. Yeah. So I was like, holy shit. Yep. Okay, cool. That's interesting. So, which is, I'm fine with that protein target for you. I think the carb target's a little high. Cool. I yeah. never pay attention to yeah. these more than like look at it at the end of the day. Oh, okay. Like, what am I doing? I also do think the fat target is high. Um, so I'll explain how. I yeah, by so double. That doesn't mean you can't have more fat there, right? So I'll show you how I lay this out usually for people. So protein, I think people need to be at two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Okay. Target, right? So that's where this number comes from. Based on that, then we have, and, and so this is where we'll get into here. Carb to protein ratio should be around one to one or two to one carb to protein. And so based on what type of activity you have for the day, 
I can't come up with the ratio. Are we are we going to be one to one, two to one, whatnot? So you'll see one to one most days. Um, harder days were higher. Long runs were higher. Yeah. Backgrounds. I start off with people at half, right? Um, half of what you know. This was one to one and to half. Cool. Um, I like to see where people's fat number falls out, and then we determine is that too much? Is that too? But this is. I don't like people to go less than that. Okay. So, um, so based on these macro numbers, this is the calories that come out, right? The total calories. And then I compare that to what the estimated daily needs are. And you see there's, there's excess, right? Yeah. So it's not that you can't have higher in any of these, yeah. but this is just targets. This is the, the a big target that I like people to hit. And so that's, um, one thing that I have people do, if you do track, Perfect. You can send me like a couple days and I can, we can. I'm super bad at it, but my okay. coach Rebecca wants, wanted mm. me to start doing it, which, so I started doing it again. But I do find it very interesting because I tend to eat the same things okay. all week long. Okay. Um, so that's where I get all of this information from, right? Yeah. And this also, I just want to point out like, I don't think that you should be looking at these numbers and be like, I must eat yes, this much. I'm not, not a yes. obsessive person. But I think it I think these are more important. What's going on? I'm interested to with start these figuring out how 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 does the ratio look like? Yeah. So that's where we'll go back here and with these bullet points, right? So when it comes to eating, what's really, really important is every time you're eating food, I don't know if you eat things that are not food, but when you're what? eating no, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was like, no, should I, I be? What is it? Like blue or, you know, dirt. Only sometimes. I hate my nails. That's disgusting. <laughs> you want to do. Do. do it in this combination. Protein plus fat plus fiber. Okay. Protein plus fat plus fiber, right? Protein, super important for so many reasons. Number one, like I said, the, the DIT is much higher from for protein. I thought I was getting so much more protein than I am. Most days I am under. And like, I feel like I have protein at every meal and I'm like, I like take yeah. protein shake after yeah. I run on a hard day. Yeah. It's like, I thought so for there's sure ways we can be see over how it. we can bump that up a little bit. Um, plus fat. So fat is just going to help with satiety. Yeah. Really great for satiety. Um, and, um, fiber. Fiber. I get a lot of fiber because I snack on veggies all day long. Okay. Like if I'm hungry, I have cucumbers mm -hmm. or like. But what you're going to do now is when you're having that snack, it's not going to just be the fiber alone. Yeah. Like putting these three things together at the same time. That's what I'm really bad at. Yeah. And that's Which important for how your metabolism. Snack. Yes. Yes. I had a huge weight loss like seven years ago. So I think I got in that habit of when you eat, you have cucumbers. Or like when you're hungry, you have celery mm -hmm. so that you can munch and like eat. Gotcha. So this is something that I like, it's a habit that I've never been able to break. So this is like, I've never even thought of it like that. Yeah. And sometimes when people ask me, is it better if I have, you know, more smaller meals or three meals? Cause this is what triggers in my mind. So I like people, and this might be a huge shift for you and it might take some time, but you know, one of the ways that you can tell if your meals are in the right composition. So it's like, this is the formula, but then how much of this and how much of this and how much of this, yeah. right? In combination, the way you can tell if you're getting the right meal is if you, you know, if you target three meals a day and that doesn't have to be at those meal times, like whenever that works for you in your day, if you're able to eat that meal and go for four hours feeling high energy and satisfied, right? Yeah. Then that is a good indication that you're putting that meal together appropriately. If you're having a meal and you're hungry in an hour, two hours, there's something wrong with the composition of that meal. Yeah, totally. It makes total sense. Yes. I'm yes. always hungry because I'm having cucumbers. <laughs> yes. I'm eating for the sake of eating. Yeah. So I think that's a good big goal. I love it. Okay. So next when that it comes to like quantity, right? Like how much of these things are we having? Well, we've got protein targets for your day, right? And we'll see kind of how that falls out for you. Ideally protein is taken in in even quantities throughout the day. Um, that's best for, you know, the purpose of protein. And, yeah. Um, and then we look at, okay, what's the carb to protein ratio in my meals or my snacks? One to one, two to one, like we talked about, yeah. right? In terms of grams. 
fat should be consumed inversely of carbohydrate, right? So the best example of this is someone gets a salad, right? They think, great, salad, super healthy, right? Salad tends to be very low carb. Yeah. You need more fat in that, right? So, gotcha. so generally when people have a salad and then they're like, I'm hungry and it's been like 45 minutes, they didn't have enough protein yeah. and they didn't have enough fat, Yeah. right? So yes, salad can be a great meal, but it needs to be the right quantities. Of yeah. Conversely, if you're having, you know, like a pasta meal, you want that to be low in fat. If you are going to have a high carb, something which we all do. So yeah, just sense. knowing it's better for our body to keep the fat low. And sometimes, you know, that's unavoidable like with ice cream, but that happens. It's got to have it. And Girl, when we while. have ice cream, if we are doing this when we want to be, so I tell people like, this is like learning the rules. So sometimes yeah. people think they're being healthy, but they're not doing the things that's best for their metabolism. Yeah. Right. Um, but if you know what the things are and you choose to do them when you want to, then when you are choosing not to do them, your body will handle that thing so much better. Cool. In such a better way. Um, yeah. So next bullet, when you are doing, you know, wanting to do the right thing, you choose the higher fiber carbohydrates in your meal, right? That's standard. And then, so properly modifying carbon taken in accordance with training sessions again. So when you're going harder or longer, you're going to need more carbohydrates yeah. around that workout. Makes sense why I fog out often and easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't be afraid to do that because that's when your body is using things using differently. Them is using them, right? So, you know, ice cream, best time for ice cream? After a long run, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, have your protein shake and the solid meal, have ice cream that day. You know, that's- That makes sense. It's, you Never know, a, yes. You're high efficient. Yeah, your body's gonna utilize those sugars on that day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, same, uh, another thing with this is, when your goal, when the goal of the workout is endurance, increasing the aerobic capacity with it, which is the fat burning system, right? Yeah. A lower carb intake around that, as long as it's a moderate intensity, easier intensity, will help accelerate those gains. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then don't overeat during workouts, right? Which we talked about. So yeah. if you're going two hours and it's moderate intensity, you should be able to do that without fuel. Okay. Electrolytes. That's normally about the point where I start. Like I normally I would go like 13 plus is where I'll start taking okay. something. And then some people um, often ask me, okay, because of this rule that to here where you can refer to here if you need to, um, you know, so they say, so when I do, so you always, oh, you'll always feel a race no matter if it's two hours or lot, right? Cause you're, cause it's a race and you yeah. have to feel that. But this is for training. So when you, when you have a training, um, when you have a training day that you are going to need to fuel, people say, then do I wait two hours to start that? No, you start that fueling the day before or the day of? No, um, within that workout, right? So say oh, you're going to do like gotcha, gotcha. a two and a half hour run yeah, or yeah, a three yeah. hour run. Then they think like, oh, should I wait till two hours into that workout to start fueling? No, you start fueling when you need to, like 45 minutes or whatever yeah. it is. Right? Okay. So you don't, yeah. That makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all right, overall thoughts. This is amazing. Yes. I did, this was so fascinating. Right? Cause it's something that we've just been done. Like mm. we mm -hmm. feel this, but yeah. why? Right. So that makes the most sense. And I love how specific this is on what I need. Yeah. Cause I think like, I've never been someone who's very motivated by weight loss. Like right. I genuinely don't care what I yeah. weigh once like we're four weeks in. Yeah. So I know that that's just four for some people, gonna... it's a byproduct of yeah. this, but of like doing the things that are going to help your performance anyway. Yeah. Right. Eating and, really, really yeah. smart and well and yeah. working as hard as I do. Like I always end up in like spectacular and shape, feeling good and feel amazing. Eating this way will help you feel. So I love that good. how specific it is. Yeah. I love the the three components. Like I've never really thought. I always thought two, mm. but I've never stopped to think all three together. So that's really interesting. Yes. Yeah. So that's interesting. This and what's so rad? Yeah. And if you real if you really make the effort and start doing that regularly, you will feel different. So oh, Sam. Oh, it is you in here. Are you done? Yeah. This is Nikki. You guys are sisters. Nikki is my sister. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. They have a new ball. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? 
Nikki did that thing that you were oh, like, scuba thing. What does so this mean for me, too? Scuba thing. Yeah, Sam, no, I, <laughs> Sam doesn't run. So I am mean, easy for me. Hey, 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 I ran three miles yesterday. Yeah. I had to walk twice, but it's okay. What does this okay. mean? Uh-huh. What are your... So it just means? breaks everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's so much. Oh, I'm excited. Teach me. No, there's no time. Let's oh, that sisters in the same Hi. city. So, okay, let's do some... What are the takeaways and one of the next steps? It's, I really, really want to take more time looking at yeah, what I do that. And I send it to you. Um, I, I'm really, I mean, one thing we're really working on is figuring out how I'm fueling my long runs. Yeah. Because cramping is such a weird thing that happens to me when it gets so hot and I do start sweating so much. Let's look at your sweat. So, yeah. This is going to be so helpful to you. I mean, like, this is a piece when people, you know, haven't really paid attention to hydration before. So effective it's funny because it's the weighing thing like i don't like weighing myself um, and that's always been the thing that i've been like it's just not worth it to me to like even go there but yeah once i did it i was like i this is how much i know i weigh <laughs> i'm not yeah, worried about this at all so i think it's just something that i've like been feeling weird about and it's not a big deal so what let's talk about what your current strategy is or what you're thinking your strategy is for long runs i take a jenny can in the morning okay like a, Do you eat breakfast too? Yeah, so okay. I'll, like a long run, I'll normally have, what have I been doing? Well, I've normally been doing oatmeal with a tablespoon of peanut butter. Okay. And, and is that your, is that going to be race day plan? Probably. Okay. Normally I have a bagel, but it hasn't been sitting well with me yeah. the last two years. It's yeah. kind of just been one of those, mm-hmm. eat a bagel before your race kind no. of thing. So I'm over it. The oatmeal is much better. Yeah, I like the oatmeal. Day. I feel full. I, like the, I don't like the peanut butter in it, but I do feel better yes. with it. Because the thing I just I told Michael too is if you are someone who tends to get hungry during the long stuff or racing, ha- having the you can with protein in it for your pre-race you can is great. It doesn't have a ton of protein in it, like eight grams per serving, but it's enough to kind of like plug that hole a yeah. little bit, you know, have a little more sustenance. And then I've been doing Jenny can, like I'll probably do two scoops but throw it out okay. the entire thing. Like I'll just put it in a water bottle and sip it throughout with like a noon tablet. So don't do that. No. The most effective, the purpose of the you can and the way it functions, you want to get the dose in so it can do its slow release thing in your body. It's not a sip, gotcha. sip on thing. So when you're doing it before, and the great thing about you can is you can make it as concentrated as you can tolerate. Cool. So beforehand, I told Michael, I usually have people do two or three servings of it, depending on what gotcha. can be tolerant. So you have your breakfast and then like 30 minutes before race or long run, depending on how much time you have, you'll do, play around to see how concentrated you can I'm tolerate. sure I can get it down. Okay. Get anything down. Um, so, you know, doing that like in like 10 ounces, 12 ounces, if you're doing two or three servings, get that in. And then when you're going to fuel during, have you seen those like goo, goo flasks? I'll show you what they look like. No. So these are eight ounces, I believe. Cool. Um, yeah. And you can, I think the um, running company, they're not called that anymore, Jackrabbit stores have, they have these. Oh, cool. Just buy them. Um, so you can fit, it's now one scoop. They change, change their serving size. One scoop of you can. So it's easiest if you fill this with water. Put it in a shaker bottle. Do one scoop of a few can in there. Shake it up and then put it back in. Gotcha. gotcha. I've done this enough that saved you a lot of. I did it in a plastic bag. Like, 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 oh my god, you will love this story. I took like a little bit of you can because I hadn't eaten before our hill workout on with you. Yeah. When we did Tuesday, yeah. and I must have gotten powder on the bottle, and I was in line to go to Starbucks, and someone handed me a card that had recovery info for drugs. And they were like, if you ever need help or someone to talk to, just call. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, it's New York City. People do weird shit right. all the time. I go to Starbucks. My nose is covered with white powder. It looked like I had just done the gnarliest oh, yeah. rail. No. And I was like, oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yes, that is like that powder gets everywhere. It was so funny. Yeah. So yeah, this is a good, uh, didn't do cocaine. I'm just trying to get my ginny can. Yeah. So this is something that I have people do. So this is easy to tuck into a pocket or and someone to hand you. Memory. Yeah. And so also with you can, because of the way it acts in your body, it's easier to, t- it's better to take it earlier than later. You don't have yeah. behind on the you can. So, you know, before halfway point, maybe mile eight, depending on how you're feeling, 
you take one of these and then, you know, because you have the, the larger servings before, you can take just one of these and then go to something that's fast digesting carbs later in the race. So if you so like, like, like choose or yes, those are more fast digesting. Um, you know, if you like a gel, I told Michael the gels that I recommend people are spring gels. They're food based and they're really delicious. They're delicious. It's like, I don't mind anything. Yeah. I'm kind of a... So whatever it is that you, but I do recommend later in the race going to something that's a little bit more fast digesting sugar. Okay. So, and that's something that's fascinating. You practice during... What about electrolytes? Long... Like, should I bring my own electrolytes I, during the race? I do, you know, this, that's a decision you can make based on what the weather's going to be that day. But I do think it is less dicey. Beneficial to have your own. Just so when you feel thirsty, you can drink something, yeah. right? Um, and I also told Michael, what's really easy, especially if you're gonna have people to hand things off to you, is uh, those eight ounce Poland Spring bottles. Oh, like, yeah. you can fill that up, chuck it when you're done with it, right? Yeah. Get another one from someone, just chuck it, or you know, fill it up with water on an aid station and in your packet, so it's not like super cumbersome, yeah. but it like fits in your hand fairly easy. Also, some of those handhelds are not too bad to yeah. run with, but it's like, once you start running with something in your hand, it's not that big, big deal. deal. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and some of those, if you run with your phone, some of those have like a pocket that you can put your Show phone in. in. Um, but yeah, and so based on your, and I want to see a little bit more of this data, you know, your target is gonna, you know, we're gonna target a thousand, cal uh, based on this, we're gonna target a thousand milligrams of sodium per hour, right? Um, so that can be quite significant. So I think you would do a combination of drink and some salt tabs. Okay, salt tabs. Mm -hmm. But one of the, so one of the reasons why I like the precision hydration in addition to it having a higher concentration, which you need, um, is also that it's formulated with everything you need. So when you, the point of the, the sodium is to absorb water, right? Yeah. So the most effective way to absorb sodium is with glucose, right? You need, they have, they're a dual transporter, co-transporter, which helps the water absorb more effectively. Um, the thing with salt tabs is that they don't have any glucose in them. Gotcha. So it has to have that. Well, but you can, you can supplement, which is why I think that having the liquid is best. There you go. Also because the point of the sodium is also taking in water. And so when people are just doing salt tabs, they're often not taking in enough water. So it's like, what are they trying to absorb? And then they're just like dumping salt and you'll feel like... What cakey? Yeah. That makes sense. Which, yeah. So if you are going to, if we are going to supplement with some salt tabs, there is another product that I have you combine with salt tabs. They okay. don't have a lot of salt in them, but they have glucose in them that will help with absorption. And you want to take in some water from the aid station if you are going to do a salt tab. Okay. But I do recommend trying to start running with something. I know. I don't mind the Poland Springs water bottles, so that might little be ones. something we play with is grabbing yeah, those or, yeah, mm -hmm, little ones mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then chucking it when I'm done so yeah. I can just kind of like shake yep. my hands out. But this is all stuff to think about and play with and I'm not yeah. opposed to it, but yeah. I think, uh, so as far as electrolytes go, are you going to try some of the pH, get order some of the pH? I would love like, to. Yeah. yeah, I'm open to trying anything. Yeah. I'm never doing this again, so we have to nail it. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. And then, okay, so that's this piece. Um, food piece we are gonna play with. Play with, yep. And I think, I mean, one of like the other biggest takeaways is, you know, just, because you don't have a crossover point, you can't see, you know, you don't know what point. The tr true aerobic zone, so, you know, where are you doing your long runs now? Fine, that's fine, but, you know, when you are going hard, go hard. Okay. And take a longer rest interval. That's important as well. Okay. That's something that we're working on these next four weeks, yeah. is doing all of my, like, long runs and easier runs towards 8.30 and not having me, like, panic when I see it, knowing I can do it. Yeah. So I think in the next four weeks, if we start doing that, in addition to all my speed stuff, like I, I'm interested to see how I feel. Yeah, yeah, because even from like from a fuel perspective, and even from like here to here, the 849 to the 820, it's not like total cal car calorie is only going up too. So it's like you, you know, it's this is a fine place for you to be running. I know I don't know why it's like gets in my head. I'm like I'm running too fast. Yeah. 
Michael told me to stop running with my watch, and I'm like, during mm-hmm. the race, I'm for sure not gonna run with my watch. And if we lose each other, we lose each other, and I just trust that I can I also told it. him, you know, based on this, you know, sometimes when people have a pace goal, they like to start the race at that pace goal. Oh, hell no. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> Especially not, not the way, no. right? Not the way we, we use fuel, yeah. yeah, right? Starting, having a low, slower pace and working into that, is gonna conserve more car. Uh, car- I, when I did Chicago you. three years ago, I did the last like one and a half miles at seven fifteen. Okay. So like, that is the way to go. Yeah, definitely <laughs> for sure. Negative splitting is is better. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome, Nikki. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll yeah. Keep you posted I mean, on what happens and how things go. Michael. Uh, yes, Kelly. Tell me, I, what, I didn't get to sit in on your sweat test. Walk me through what Nikki found during your sweat salinity test and then your metabolic efficiency test. Uh, so my sweat test uh, was very uh, informative. Um, I kind of feel like I need the backstory. I feel like I've always considered myself somebody that doesn't sweat a lot. Yeah. Uh, which uh, may have changed with age and fitness over the years, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm actually categorized as a very salty sweater. Really? And I lose a lot, and uh, my current nutrition plan and my hydration plan is not very effective, uh, which could explain a couple of past uh, long distance uh, races I've done. Um, but yeah, very, uh, very important. Obviously, I've always hydrated, but I think the electrolyte uh, component has always been missing. Yeah. Um, and even now, I'm being uh, told uh, that I need to to do something about it yeah. in terms of uh, changing my plan. Uh, so basically, I'm going to use the Precision Hydration. Just ordered mine yesterday. Nice. I got mine in the mail. I actually used it on Saturday. You liked it? I did. And it's a lot of it's about the preloading, so the night before and the morning of. Um, still learning what everything means, but I'm on the 1500 and yeah. the, at night and in the morning. Uh, and then I used one bottle of 500. We were running about two hours and 2.15 on Saturday. It wasn't as hot as, I thought it was beautiful on Saturday. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I brought a bottle of that during, which I typically just say, ah, two hours and fine. I had some water, but so um, felt amazing. So I mean, that's really the only big change I've made. Uh, so what did your, have you weighed yourself? I have not started that. I got yelled at by Nikki. Uh, I don't have a scale at home, and I thought I would do most of my runs from here. I know, I need to just go and just go do it. I kept thinking I was just going to do more of my workouts here. Uh, so yeah, we, she wants to know more about that and you see. Can't do it here. You no. need to go outside. Exactly. So be in, be, in the ele- <laughs> be in the elements, per se. Uh, but yeah, it was really eye opening. I mean, I weighed myself twice in one workout, I lost four. No, four and a half pounds of sweat. And then another one I lost six. That's absurd. Is that not like... And that's not a long run, that's your 60 to 90 minutes, right? Yeah, that was like, a, like one of them was a five mile or easy in Central, or Prospect Park, the other one was a temple. And you workout. lost that much? Six pounds. So where were you again? Remind me where you were in the salt. I'm below average. Below average. But below average Oh, we're talking about the salt though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so funny. <laughs> but that combined with how much I sweat is yeah. problematic. Very problematic, yeah. So I've already uh, informed my wife that she'll be uh, in charge of ourself. hydration for race day. So stoked. Yeah. Speaking was, of, what did you find out? Uh, yeah, I uh, my threshold was 747. That's where I kind of go over from burning uh, fat to carbohydrates. I don't That's have my, one. You don't have a fat burn, you go right, yeah, I carbs. saw that on your report that you sent me. Um, and then I have a couple of zones which um, you're most efficient most in, efficient in like uh, the two paces that uh, are most efficient are 827 and 913. That's and that seems to be where I burn fat very efficiently. So basically what she said to me is if you keep your easy runs slower than 830, like that's you're just gonna teach your body continuously how to train or to burn fat as its primary fuel, and that'll be good going into Chicago. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's it really kind of uh, you know I've always trained via Jack Daniels with pacing and stuff, but this is kind of a whole new scientific approach, specific. right? It's very specific, you know, and um, 
you know, we've always preached uh, in terms of coaching, I've always preached that most people, most people do their long runs too fast and their short runs too easy, yeah. which I think is true. Everybody thinks, uh, you know, they have to run their long runs at marathon pace, but it was kind of uh, confirming that that's important to run easy when you're supposed to run easy. Um, for you. For me. But I thought it was interesting to, to, to kind of have a more concrete oh, yeah. pace plan in place. Like, I need to run. This is where I'm training my body how to burn fat. And yeah. that's really important. Because I guess with your, if you're converting right over, then you need to take in more calories, right? Yeah. Which well, could lead to a lot of GI issues that the more you have to take in, right? Yeah. Is that appropriately Like a hummingbird. Said? You're like a hummingbird? That's what it feels like. Yeah. What did she say about UCAN? Did you take UCAN? You'll take UCAN prior to Chicago? Yeah, and then and you'll take it during. I don't remember exactly what she said, but I'll tell you. Yeah, she said I typically would have set somebody out for like mile 18, and she said to have that. She said to have that earlier because I used to make it for three hours, so 18 at that pace would be around three hours. But that's what she said. You want to be a little bit ahead of it, so you're better sure. off. Sure, insane. She, she said uh, that I should get it around 13, 12 or 13. Yeah, so. she said to get And then the there. other thing that I always thought that with the, uh, because of the starch and the slow burn with the you can that you didn't want to mix it with gels and things, but. So she said she wants me to take you can at 13 and then start, start taking gels. gels around 18, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was like, that's fascinating. This is it. This is the, the secret that we're missing. This I know. The, the missing piece of the puzzle, which is, you know, we've always said, don't let nutrition be the one thing that you can take control of, ruin your race day. Totally. And now, this is it. Totally. Now I might as well go, let's go sub three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm literally like, I don't, I'm trying not to think about it because I know we're too far out to even, even gauge where we're at. Yeah. But some of these runs really are putting me like in my head, I'm doing the, oh fuck. How am I going to? In, in the way of being too fast, you feel like you go faster. I feel like we need. To, I need. To, I just don't think we have enough time to get me where I need to be, which I know it's too soon, and I just yeah. need to trust the process and yeah. chill out. Yeah. So like I'm having the I'm having the like athlete yeah, yeah, panic yeah. over here. Well, not. I don't want to call it panic. It's just I think it's the normal like looking at your time frame and being like, how is this gonna work? But then yeah. the coach. In me is like, girl, you need to chill out. Yeah. You're doing everything right. You're. I, I thought we were gonna go with the the Kelly golf mentality. <laughs> this like, I got it. It's I gonna have. It. It's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be happen. great. Gonna... I just keep thinking back to Chicago when I did, when I ran it, and I keep thinking like, how did I do that? What year was it? Two thousand sixteen. Okay, so three years ago. I just don't know how I did it. You ran at 3... 42. 42. <laughs> which is fast. Yeah, yeah. Blazingly fast. Like, I don't know how I did that. Which I do. I just trained and then did what I was supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. But I, like, I really do have a hard time when things really start hurting, like, trusting. We all do, yeah. yeah. <sighs> but you know what I've realized over the years that marathons hurt. Yeah. Regardless of what pace you're running. True. Right? So it's that that I try to remind myself that was what got me through If Chicago. you're in pain but you can still keep that pace, kind of the, the mentality as well. If I can maintain this pace, then I'll be done faster, the pain. But even if you start to slow down, it doesn't feel better. That's what got me through Chicago right? when I started to slow down. I was like, You will be out here longer yeah. in pain longer. Yeah. Do you have another right. gear? <laughs> can you get this done? as soon as you can yeah no that's i mean yesterday i had a really good i had a really good we did k repeats and that was really good k repeats. but the last two were like me taking a little extra walking break when i should have kept jogging and being like is this uh you by yourself or is this no, moonshot? Moonshot. but i did i was totally fine and i let myself kind of be like i need this rest and i didn't i could have easily have jogged through it yeah I, which it's in those moments that those are the moments that I need to tweak in those yeah. moments being like you have this everything's fine you're strong it, it, this is hard for everybody stick with the group hard, yeah well it's it's hard for everybody that's absolutely true and 
a lot of people think that faster runners, if they just make it look easy, and, yeah. but it's, that's not. It still, sucks for everyone. Yes, it does. All right, that was fascinating. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs>